Okay guys, so this is a first look at the new template update. Uh, I'm going to run it within an IFRS plus consolidation file. Um, and this is a version from late in 2017. Uh, so we've just designed it to try and cater for all the changes that need to happen to update to the latest IFRS standards. Okay, now uh, just to show you, we're starting a file. There are no errors and my status page is clean. Even though I have got five and a half thousand line items in my TB, um, everything in this file is pretty much hunky-dory. Alright, so we've put it under the Template Tools tab. You'll see that there's a Framework Update button available. And when I click on that, it will list all of the available updates that you, uh, that you can implement. Uh, we've got IFRS 9 and 15. Those are joined as one. Those are currently going to have to be implemented now so um, I've just put those two changes together. We've then also got this IFRS update which is that little disclosure in the notes uh, where you can choose um, what future standards you're still wanting to adopt. So that we can we can probably send out quite frequently just to give everybody um, that update every three months possibly. IFRS 16, still busy finalizing this one, but this is now one that is not yet mandatory. So it is optional. Now, just have a look at the source, internal versus external. Um, and there's just something to be aware of uh, more than anything else. When it's internal, it means that if you created a new client file now, it would actually already be included. So you wouldn't have to go and um, do this if you created a new client it's just for your roll forward or an old set of financials that you're wanting to update so automatically these will be checked in new files that you create and the sources within the template this is going to then come from an external source uh, that we will also send with the updates not part of the current financial statements uh, but available for early adoption if you choose okay I'm going to check the first two items here and I'm going to then click on apply all updates okay now there is an undo last update button what that'll do is it lets you basically roll back the financials it's not the greatest solution because um, we can't go and roll back all your link changes as well but for those cases where the reality is you're probably not going to use a lot of the new links yet anyway so you might be okay but at least it allows you to restore your last set of financial statements. Now it is going to ask you for your password. This is the manager password. We just don't want guys to make these changes unnecessarily or when they shouldn't be. So I'm going to hit agree. Okay, now this is going to take a little bit of time. Okay, so now it tells me that the process is finished um, and it's just telling me and warning me that due to the changes in the link numbers we might need to do a bit of relinking and what it then actually automatically does is it closes the financials because if they're unlinked line items on your TB it will be out of balance and um, it goes and it's refreshing the entire database, refreshing the memory and it's going to open up my working trial balance. Okay, and what you'll see is that all the blanks are on top. So it sort of pre-lists it for you. There are 182 entries that I now need to go and link. All right, now I'm not going to go through that. I'm going to pause and do some uh, movie magic. And thanks to uh, SQL queries, we now have a um, fully linked trial balance. So I can now go and open up my financial statements again. Okay, so what has happened is, um, you'll see on my checklist, it wasn't there before, we've now got financial instruments in conjunction with IFRS 9. So that's the new disclosures, this is the new checklist in place. Uh, I can go to my statement of financial position, not much would have actually changed here. I can maybe go to one of the notes sheets. Uh, let's scroll down to other financial assets. Okay, all sorts of new, all this stuff is new. These are the new accounting policies. Okay, go into the note itself. 
sorry, lots of accounting policies. It's got a whole new little table here where um, I've got to dis disclose which um, standard I'm using for each financial year. So uh, if I change this and I say I'm using IS9, it actually warns me that this table is now the, uh, sorry, the IAS39. It says this is the IFRS9 table. So I've got to close that and open up the IAS39 table. And if I switch it, it goes back. Okay, now it tells me, no, this is the IAS39. I've got to open up the IAS, uh, IFRS9 table. So uh, this is definitely the new note. This is not available in any template we've released yet. And I just want to pop over to the status page, um, show you that everything is in balance except these. Now, the reason that these are not in balance is that I need to do some relinking um, of some of my um, financial assets and financial liabilities, well, mostly financial assets, that have now got new categories. So there's some old categories that fell away. But because there's this crossover where we show both, we show the old disclosure in last year and the new disclosure in the current year. We're not actually deleting the links. We've just got to go and relink it. So this tells me here that it's finding use of IAS39 exclusive links. Um, so I would need to go and fix that uh, in my linking. I'm not going to go and do do that in my movie magic. And uh, yeah, just as a last check, find error cells. No error cells found. What actually happened in this version is the entire cash flow statement was replaced as well. Uh, the layout changed too much for us to be able to do an automatic update of lines. So we just updated the entire cash flow. Um, and that is all beautifully in balance. No problems detected anywhere. So it's fantastic. It's working. Um, and uh, yeah, still a few little tweaks to make but it is working and this is what we will be releasing first thing in the, in the new year. Thanks guys, cheers.